All right, guys, so uh, another project with the uh, International 175C crawler loader. Uh, what I've done here so far is, uh, well, let me start off by saying what I'm doing here. Uh, the uh, hydraulic track tensioner uh, seals are bad in here. This, uh, there's a grease fitting down here that normally you put grease into that and uh, it pushes that piston out and that's what puts tension on the track and what's happened now is my seals uh, or my seal is bad in here and it's uh, the track tension is not staying so uh, what I'm doing is tearing it apart to replace those grease seals which is uh, apparently a fairly common thing with these older machines so so far how, how I've gotten it to this point is uh, I took a torch you're if you want to try to save these bolts that hold these pads on uh, good luck they're either gonna break or they're all the threads are all buggered up or whatever I tried to save one or two of them and I, and I did I saved one and threads were screwed up on another one and uh, one of them snapped so then I gave up but what you need to do is replace or excuse me you need to remove the two track shoes so I torched off the bolts I'll buy new bolts um, so I torched off the bolts on the two track shoes, one on either side of the master uh, pin, and you know it's the master pin because it's got a dimple on it. So when you're looking at your track here, you see that pin's got a flat face? That pin's got that dimple on it? That's how you know that's your master. So uh, I worked, I drove the machine up to a position where that master pin was the idler would be about here so that master pin was just clear of that uh, the frame there uh, where I could get the hydraulic clamp to sit in here and press that pin out so uh, I got lucky and I actually know a guy that works on heavy equipment and uh, he came over with his service truck just now he just left a little bit ago and he pressed that pin out for me I'm hoping that's gonna be the worst of the whole project uh, and that required you know a big heavy hydraulic gigantic C clamp I'll see if I can insert a photo of it here I didn't want to get any video or anything and slow him down so I'll try to put a picture in here what that looked like you know it, it pops it all the way through you you pull the uh, the tool back out and the track just laid right down so <clears throat> And then the idler assembly just rolls right out on the track and I set the end of it up on a jack stand and now I'm taking out the uh, I'm taking out the grease fitting and I'm gonna try to pull that uh, rod out and then hopefully I can uh, hopefully the rod and piston all come out together according to the book that's two different pieces but the book also talks about a different fork assembly two other different fork assemblies for this machine um, you know different years or whatever so I'm hoping that rod and piston and seals and everything comes out in one unit so uh, I'm gonna take that grease fitting out because I can move it but it's just got so much suction on it from the grease that I'm gonna let air in get back air in back here and hopefully I pull the whole damn assembly out there and I'll show you um, what that looks like so uh, that's what I'm doing right now. I'll update you here when I got something worth updating. Alright guys, let me take this opportunity to uh, apologize right off the bat here. I should have done it earlier. Uh, the camera work is really shaky. I just, I shake. So, you know, my camera shakes. Um, so anyhow, uh, what, I've, what we got here is the uh, rod. It pulled out separate. I didn't get lucky. Uh, the piston came off the end of it. So I pulled the rod out separate. Um, and laid it over there then uh, according to the book there's threads in the end of the piston so I pulled the rod out of here and then that left the piston and seal and everything still in the cylinder so I took a half inch bolt it's half inch thread not it takes a three quarter inch uh, head size I think so there's supposed to be half inch threads in this piston I welded that on just a piece of rod I poked it down in there, got lucky, and it didn't thread in very far. It's only caught like a half a thread, but it was enough that I, I got lucky and it pulled pulled the piston and everything right out. Now, just, uh, just kind of inspecting it a little bit. I don't know how well this can show up on the camera, but right here, this is the seal. There's a big chunk of it missing right here, and in this chunk of grease here, this chunk of grease come out right there. It's hard to see or whatever, but I'm going by feel. Feels like a piece of that seal right there. So 
Um, that seal is bad, and I mean, it's really bad. It's missing an eighth of the damn seal is gone. So there's no question in my mind that that, that seal is bad, but hopefully the cylinder, the inside of this is still hopefully in good enough shape that a new seal and everything will actually make a seal. Um, so I'm gonna clean all this up and I'll show you what it looks like after it's all cleaned up. All right guys, so here's the piston and I uh, cleaned it up just a little bit. You can see this is the old seal. You can see the big chunk of it's missing here. Uh, I mean, it's not quite half of it, but it's at least a quarter of it. So that seal is shot and there's no, on this one, there's no snap ring or anything. On uh, This is a very early model uh, 175C. This was like the 110th one produced. They made, I don't know how many of these they made, but uh, this one's from 1972. So this is a real early model. So um, these, it kind of looks like it'd be replaceable guide rings here, but it's not. This is steel. So um, there's no snap ring on this one either. So uh, if we look at the book, these are the three possible forks. This is the early one. This is the one I got. And you can see this is the breakdown of how it goes together. These are later ones. There's a couple of guide rings on there. This is my piston. It's got a scraper seal. It's in the cylinder. Then if you look at number three, number three is a piston without guide rings. So it's just a piston. And then down here is the seal. There's no snap ring like on the later models. Uh, let's see where we got our... Uh, we got our uh, scraper out here in the cylinder. I just dug it out of the end of the cylinder. I don't know how, how well that's going to show up in the sun and everything, but you can see I've got it pulled out here. That pushes back into this, this groove here. So when you put this back together, make sure you're putting it together in the right direction. Uh, same thing with that hydraulic seal or grease seal. You want to make sure that when you put this back together, there's like a U shape. Here, we'll look at the new kit. This seal is, is solid on one side, and on the other side, it's got like a groove in it. You want to make sure that groove goes toward the pressure side. So anyhow, this kit, this is the kit you need, or I hope you need, because this is the kit I bought. This come from Finney, uh, H. Finney. That's who I got my operator's manual from. Uh, and they deal in all kind of parts and stuff. You can find their stuff on eBay. So this is, that's the brand of it, but uh, they sell it under that number. So if you look on eBay and you search for Grease Seal 906003, this is the kit you're gonna get. And it comes with everything for, you know, the early ones, all I'm gonna need is that and that scraper seal. I'm just gonna need those two white parts. The later models, if you got guide rings, you got your two guide rings and your snap ring. So one kit does all 175 Cs. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel that off there. I'm gonna clean that up real good. I'm gonna clean the end of this up real good. Now there's nothing, there's nothing that holds these two parts together. You can see how it's kind of, there's a ledge there. There's probably a, oh, I'm gonna guess that's a 16th of a, a lip there. There's nothing that holds these two together, so it's just pressure holding that in. So like, this is gonna go down in the cylinder first, and then that pushes in behind it, and they just sit on each other like that in there. So I'm gonna get the uh, get this old seal off, get this cleaned up, get the new seal put on here. I'm gonna go out there and clean up that cylinder real good. I'm using a bucket of old diesel fuel, because that's what I got, I drained it out of the machine. Um, change the fluids out and stuff. So I got a bucket of old diesel fuel. I'm gonna slop around in there, clean that up really, really good. New uh, new seal on there, and I'm gonna shove this back in. And uh, I'll update you here as we go. All right, guys, here's where we're at. Uh, you can see I got the track tensioner all uh, reassembled. Uh, it's ready to go back in the machine, and. Uh, to clean up that cylinder, of course I had, you know, I had that rod out and I had the piston out. Um, to clean that cylinder up, I used a three stone hone, just a cheap Napa uh, three stone hone on my drill and uh, cleaned the cylinder out real good. I used diesel fuel, slopped it around down in there, uh, took a long rod and kind of, I stood that cylinder up, filled it full of diesel fuel and then slopped around in there and then dumped it out. 
Um, I made sure I caught all that diesel fuel. You know, I didn't want to make a too big environmental catastrophe here or nothing. But uh, so I uh, slopped all the diesel fuel around in there, cleaned it up real good. Took my three stone hone, ran it in and out there. Uh, that cleaned up pretty good. So I'm real happy with the condition of that cylinder. I uh, then took my piston with my new seal on it, greased it up pretty good, and shoved it in. Um, then I put my uh, scraper seal on the end of the cylinder, and that took a little bit of doing to get it uh, in, sit in the groove right. Uh, but you know, got it uh, finagled in there. Uh, then after that, I took that shaft, that you know, 12 inch long shaft or whatever that is, and then I pushed that in. And with that new scraper seal on there, I had I had also sanded that shaft, kind of knocked down any uh, rust and stuff because uh, it ain't perfect. Um, but uh, uh, the shaft then made a real good seal on that scraper seal, so it needed just a little bit of uh, persuasion with a hammer, uh, sledgehammer, just to knock it in there. Uh, and that's simply because of the uh, seal that it's making against that scraper. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, and you can see there's some grease poking out there. That's just stuff I smeared on there. Uh, so this assembly is ready to get flipped back over and shoved in the machine. And I took a uh, wire brush on my drill. I got the assortment of these from Harbor Freight for like a couple of bucks. Those are super handy. Um, so I've, I've been using that. I cleaned out the inside of my links, knocked all the rust and stuff off of there. They look pretty good. I took uh, a couple of screwdrivers and cleaned out. There's a little groove around the edge here. Clean that out real good, blew that all out with the air gun. So uh, we're all ready to go back together with a pin there. I uh, also took that wire brush and cleaned this out down here. Um, so that's all, that's ready for that track tensioner again. I uh, also then took my pin in the shop there and just lightly by hand, uh, took some sandpaper and just cleaned up these ends. On this pin, you see that uh, the end is a larger diameter than the center of it on both ends. So the center of the pin uh, is not tight in there uh, just these ends are so just make sure you clean that up real good uh, it was kind of galled up a little bit from pressing it out um, but I didn't want to I don't want to grind it or anything like that I don't want to change the diameter of the pin because I want it to still fit good uh, so I just cleaned it up make sure there wasn't no burrs on it and uh, now essentially we're ready to go back together so I need to flip that thing over and then roll it back in the machine uh, clean up my tools and stuff get all this little stuff out of the way and then uh, call my friend up again and have him come out He's gonna bring his service truck back out, and I'm sure I won't get any video of that I'll maybe take a couple of pictures, but uh, again, I'm being billed for this so um, He I don't know how it's how they're gonna work his pay uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make it worth his time, you know myself coming out here But also I will be getting a bill from his employer um, so I'm being billed for this. Uh, I expect it's going to be a few hundred dollars to do this, but just the fact that he can do it with the right tools and safely, that means a lot to me. So I'm not out here heating with hammers and beating and maybe get hurt, maybe get somebody else hurt, you know, swinging sledgehammers and pins and all that good stuff. So uh, it's going to be worth it for me to pay him. I mean, he's got the proper service truck, the proper press and all that to do this right. So um, I'm gonna give him a shout and uh, see if he can come back out here yet today We'll get this thing all put back together and maybe make it a one-day uh, project. So I'll update you guys here after a while Well, I cleaned up uh, most all my tools. I just need one uh, I just need that ratchet to put the plate back on top of there. I left my rag sit on top of the uh, uh, Grease fitting there just because I don't want you know, maybe get dirt and shit down in there or you know, if I drop something, I don't want to hit that fitting real hard. But I flipped the uh, flipped that over from last time you saw it, and just ro just rolled that idler right on a track, rolled real nice, and uh, lift up that uh, cylinder and uh, shaft as we kind of as I kind of rolled it in there, and, and it just sets in there. Nothing holds the thing together. It's just going to be tension, you know, once we put the track on. So it's just it's just sitting in there, and that and that's all there uh, there is to it. I took a piece of board and. Uh, rolled it you know when I rolled that idler up there I just shoved a piece of board in there to keep the idler from rolling back out of there um, that's it uh, got a hold of my buddy he's uh, actually he's an extended family member I mean he's not only just a friend he is a, he's also a family member he's a real good guy uh, but anyhow I got a hold of him and he's at his uh, girl softball game right now or gonna be so he's gonna come back in a couple hours I think right now it's about 1130 
a.m. he was here right at seven o'clock so we've been or I've been working on this for oh heck I think he was here for about an hour and a half we had a little trouble out of his machine uh, we got it going real good and uh, so he was here you know a little longer than he probably should have been but the machine was malfunctioning we got it fixed and uh, I've been at this for what's that make four and a half hours now and we're ready to press it back together so as soon as he shows up I'll have him uh, he'll winch that up with his crane and uh, we'll get that attached back maybe put some binders on it or something to hold the tension on it and push that uh, push that pin back in there so hopefully next time you guys see this it will be uh, all reassembled I forgot to order bolts so I need to order some bolts either online or get him to get me some um, so I don't have the bolts to put the pads back on but Hopefully we'll get this sucker put back together here in a couple hours. I'll uh, update you when we do. Nope, it stopped. I can see the link shifting a little bit. It's moving. Yeah, I hope not. All right, guys. So uh, you know, I got a little bit of footage uh, when we were pressing that pin back in there, but um, I didn't want to waste, you know, time making video um, when I should have been, you know, paying attention to what was going on. So uh, anyhow, we got the print, the pin pressed back in. Um, it went back in real well. Uh, you can see I got this silvery stuff. That's at anti seize. Uh, the book recommends you put that on the pen, so that's what we did. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to lay, now you see I've got this pad laying here. Um, I'm going to lay this pad on here because I don't have the bolts uh, to bolt it on. But for the time being, just so I can tension this track and get it back to where it, the tension it ought to be, I'm going to lay that uh, pad on there. And the procedure for track tension is to try to gather up all the tension uh, between that roller and the idler in that one belly you try to you try to you try to get all that tension over on this side and then measure between you put a straight edge from the top there to the top of the idler just like I got this distance from the bottom of the of your straight edge to the top of that uh, grouser should be uh, inch in, an inch to an inch and a half so I'm gonna shoot for an inch and a quarter and to uh to tension that now all i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put my grease gun on my fitting and uh, pump it up and that's pretty much it so uh you know I, i'm not going to show you bolting these uh, pads back on but that's it once i get the tension on there uh, i'll show you that here in just a second what it looks like well there it is guys that's what it's supposed to look like you know except for the two pads that are not bolted down uh, i'm gonna get some bolts bolt those down but everything else is done so uh, that's what it should look like just got a little bit of tension there you don't want it tight as a banjo string um, so I got it all tensioned up put some anti seize on the bolts put the scraper back on and uh, that's it so uh, if you like this video click that thumbs up button and if you want to see more like it click the subscribe button uh, you'll get to see me working on this thing or maybe that tractor over there I need to work on it next uh, and them hit and miss engines. You never know what the heck I'm going to be working on around here. So uh, that's it for this one, guys. I'll catch you on the next one.